All right, what about Dwayne Haskins? We talk about Haskins, it seems like, uh, every hour on this show. Um, the expectations with the new system and the new staff, Scott Turner coming out, working with him, still doesn't have a ton of offensive weapons in Washington, Bill. Um, I thought that they would do more in free agency that way. Uh, you know, they tried to address a couple of those positions in the draft, but can you give us your take on Haskins and the upcoming season, your expectations for him? Well, let's take the overview first. You got a great coach in Ron Rivera. I live in Charlotte, North Carolina, so I've seen him work up close and personal for a long time. He's a great, great coach. Uh, You have, uh, with Jack Del Rio at the helm now, a defense that went from unreliable to pretty darn good, and I wouldn't be surprised with the addition of uh, the, the, the Chase Young to see it become dominant before the season's over. They've got that kind of talent. They added talent, and it's this is a really good defense. So you're going to be in a lot of games. How many games did you lose because you couldn't hold the lead? Mm-hmm. I've lost count. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> the last three or four years, a lot, yeah. Right, right. So uh, hmm. that's the number one point. Number two, I think the offense is a work in progress. McLaurin's a, a really great player. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't know if any of the others could be categorized that way other than Adrian Peterson, who's on the, you know, the 16th hole of his career. Geis, if he stays healthy, will really be a good back. And Antonio Gibson can be something special. Now, he's going to be a work in progress, too. This is a group that is a work in progress. Antonio Gibson's going to have to learn to be a full-time running back, which I believe he can be and, and really be a, a good one. Dwayne Haskins at quarterback is a work in progress. He had one year, of, essentially one year playing experience at Ohio State. So uh, you got to bring him along slowly. you got to give him a chance to, to get his feet wet, to feel comfortable in the offense. He's going to be learning a new offense now. Uh, but he has the tools. And the thing that's, that's nice about him is that, that he can do it both ways. He can do it with his feet and he can do it with his arm. Uh, and, and he, he, seems to me to have the kind of poise and approach to things um, that, that you need in a quarterback. You know, he, he just doesn't rely on his physical gifts. He's, he's able to get out there and execute and understand the game and do those things. Now, it, it, it's going to come slowly. It does for every quarterback. Peyton had an awful rookie year, but the, the arrow was up at, when it was over. Uh, he learned a lot from the experience. I think Dwayne's going to have uh, – you know, has already learned a lot, and and he'll be a lot better this year. But it's going to take him time to understand a new system. So the offense is a work in progress. The defense, I think, has a chance to be pretty special. And with Jack Del Rio, uh, they'll have their feet firmly planted on the ground. The whole team, they'll be focused. They'll play smart football. That you can take to the bank. Talking to Bill Poley, and he built up the Buffalo Bills when they went to four straight Super Bowls, won a Super Bowl with the Colts, also was the GM of the Carolina Panthers, a longtime NFL exec. And I wanted kind of your perspective on what supposedly Daniel Snyder and the Redskins were doing, which was they were bringing in Ron Rivera with a coach-centric approach. You were always part of a team with a strong GM, and then the coach focused on his thing. Do you think that this model can work? Yeah, I worked with a guy named Gibbs, if I recall correctly. That is true. Uh, But he did have Bobby Beathard. He had Bobby Beathard, that's correct, and he had Charlie Cassidy. But still, you know, you have to have someone who occupies the GM's position. The coach can't scout the players. Uh, He's got to coach the team. So the question of how that that front office is structured and, and, you know, who's the guy, whether it's Kyle or someone else, remains to be seen. But it's still a a cooperative effort. But if you give the coach uh, the the power to make the ultimate decision, then – if he's wise and he's experienced, and Ron Rivera's both, uh, they'll, they'll make the right decisions. There's nothing wrong with that. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Bill, are you surprised that at this point Cam Newton uh, hasn't signed with the team? And are you also surprised that Jameis signed for so cheap in New Orleans? Uh, no to both questions. Uh, Jameis first, uh, you know, he he didn't have a choice. He was either going to, take a, a very limited contract or have no job at all. Uh, and, and they were 
probably very few people other than Sean Payton that would be willing to take a chance on someone that threw 30 interceptions. I mean, you, you can't, you cannot win football games doing that period. End of story. So uh, he's lucky he got that. Uh, and, and maybe with the pressure off him and a chance to work with a guy like Sean and work and be around a guy like Drew Brees, he'll change his approach. And, uh, and if he does, He's got the tools to be a, a, a pretty good quarterback. In Cam's case, uh, he can't because of the shoulder injury is so critical. He no one can really make a judgment on what he can or can't be until such time as they get their hands on him and they see that shoulder and they and they work him out and all that kind of thing. So I'm not surprised by that at all. When when players are able to come in and get physicals, I'm sure people will will take a look and and and. But right now, there really appear to only be backup jobs out there. And then the question is, what is someone willing to pay him financially? Under the salary cap, you can't pay a backup quarterback starter money. So uh, Hmm. if he's a backup, you're going to have to assume that that he's going to have to take less money than he made in Carolina. 